Welcome to Electron Line. Our next problem may look familiar. We have a pulley that has mass, so therefore it has a moment of inertia, and two weights hanging, one from each side of the pulley. When we let things go, there's going to be an acceleration. The heavy weight is going to go down, the light weight is going to go up, the pulley is going to start rotating, there's going to be an angular acceleration, and they want us to find the tension in the two strings that support the two weights and the tension holding the pulley to the ceiling. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing we should do is find the, angle, the acceleration of the system and then the angular acceleration of the pulley. But let's find the acceleration of the system first because after all, tension 1 and tension 2 are going to be mg plus or minus ma. And so therefore we need to know the acceleration. So to do that, we're going to find the rotational equivalent of F equals ma. In other words, F equals ma for linear motion becomes torque equals I times alpha. And of course, we're looking for the net torque, which means all the torques in an acceleration minus all the torques opposing the acceleration. So notice that the acceleration is probably going to go in this direction. And um, well, it's either angular acceleration or linear acceleration. And that means that the heavy weight aids the acceleration and the small weight opposes the acceleration, which means that uh, the torque, which is force times distance, and this is the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point, that would be the radius, and T1 is the tension in the string on which M1 is suspended from. So we subtract from that T2 times R, which is the force on the other side, times the radius, and that must equal the moment of inertia. The moment of inertia of a solid disk is one half the mass times the radius squared, and we must multiply that times the angular acceleration. Now the angular acceleration is related to the linear acceleration as follows, A equals R times alpha, so alpha equals A divided by R. So this can be written instead of alpha, we're going to write A divided by R. Now notice, first of all, this R will cancel out one of these. So this R cancels out with that. And then we have an R on the right side and R's on the left side. So those R's cancel as well. Which leaves us with tension 1 minus tension 2 equals 1 half times the mass of the pulley times the linear acceleration. Now tension 1 is going to be mg minus ma because this is going to accelerate downwards. So tension 1 is going to equal ma minus mg for the heavy weight because it's accelerating downwards. So tension 1 is going to be m1g minus m1a. And subtract from that, and if you can hear that, that's our new little puppy fighting down there with our older dog. And so <laughs> you have to get it. T2 is going to be m2g plus m2a because the small weight is going to be accelerated upwards so the tension here is equal to the weight of the object plus the force required to accelerate it upward and that's going to be equal to one half m times a. So now what we need is we need all the terms with the a on the left side and everything else on the right side. So on the left side we end up with a minus m1a minus m2a and when we move this to the left side, we get minus one-half, the mass of the pulley times A equals, bring this to the right side, becomes minus, bring this to the right side, becomes plus, so we get M2G minus M2, oh, not M2, but M1, M1G. There we go. But notice all the negative signs. We're going to multiply both sides by negative one to get rid of most of those negative signs, so this becomes M1A plus M2A, plus one-half ma equals, and if I switch these around, I get m1g minus m2g, which is essentially also multiplying the right side by negative one. Okay, now we, can, now we can factor out an a, and we can factor out a g, so let's do that over here. So on the left side, we end up with a times m1 plus m2 plus one-half times the mass of the pulley equals, on the right side, we get G times M1 minus M2. 
like that. And maybe let's get rid of the arrow here because I'm making quite a mess of things. So let's come up here like this. So M1 minus M2, that's better. And finally, we can find A in terms of G. The acceleration of the system is equal to G times M1 minus M2 divided by M1 plus M2 plus one half the mass of the pulley. And now, of course, if we want to plug in all the numbers, we get the actual result for A. A is going to be equal to G, 9.8, this times M1, which is 5, minus M2, which is 3, divided by 5 plus 3, plus a half times 4, which is 2. So here we have A is equal to 9.8 times 2 divided by 8 plus 2, which is 10. That's 2 tenths of 9.8, which would be uh, 1.96. 1.96 meters per second squared. So 19.6 divided by 10. Yes. So that would be the acceleration. Now, of course, at this point, we don't have the angle acceleration yet, but that's okay because at this point, we don't need it for T1 and T2. So let's now find the tensions in the two strings. So we can say that T1 is equal to, as we stated before, M1G minus M1A. So in this case, that would be M1 times G minus A. M1, that's equal to 5. And G, which is 9.8 and A is equal to 1.96. So that would be, let's see here, do I have a calculator laying around? Yes, right here is my calculator. So 9.8 minus 1.96 times 5 equals, that's 39.2 newtons for T1. T2 will be equal to M2G plus M2A which is equal to M2 times G plus A, which is equal to 3 times 9.8 plus 1.96. And let's see what we get for T2. So that's uh, 9.8 plus 1.96, and multiply that times 3 equals, and it's 35.28 newtons. So T2 is 35.28 newtons. I kept an extra significant figure, or not really significant figure, so we can have less rounding errors. So now we found T1 and T2. How do we find T3? Well, to find T3, we have to draw a free body diagram. So we need a free body diagram like this. And we need to include all the forces acting within that box, including the weight of the pulley. So we have the weight of the pulley, which is big MG, big M being four kilograms. So now notice there are three, well, not three, but four forces. We have T1, T2, T3, and MG. Since it's a static situation relative to the box, because T1 and T2 are constants as the whole thing is accelerating, so is T3 and MG, we can then say that the sum of the forces in the y direction add up to zero, which is equal to T3 acting upward, minus T1 acting downward, minus T2 acting downward, and minus big MG, the weight of the pulley, acting downward as well. Which means that T3 is equal to T1 plus T2 plus MG, which is equal to 39.2 newtons, plus 35.28 newtons, plus big MG, which is 4 times 9.8. That would be 4 kilograms times 9.8. That would also be in newtons. Make sure we don't get that confused right there. And so now with a calculator, we can add all that up. Oop, there we go. 35.28 plus 39.2 plus 4 times 9.8 equals, so I have a total of 78 point four newtons t3 is equal to 78.4 somehow that doesn't make sense let me try that again i think i made a mistake somewhere so 39.2 plus 35.28 plus 4 times 9.8 equals ah much better 113 
0.7 newtons. Now the question may be, of course, why is T3 not equal to T1, T2? Because T3 must also hold the weight of the pulley itself. And so that's how you find properly T1, T2, and T3. That's how it's done.